Spencer Lazara on the phone with Jamie Varner. Thanks for taking the time, Jamie. Hey, man. Thanks for having me. So, uh, Joe Lozon, August 4th in L.A. Another short notice fight for you, coming uh, back to back almost off your last one. How, how did it come about? Uh, pretty much the same, same as the last one, only not as dramatic. It was uh, the guy got injured. A couple guys said no to the fight. My, the, the name came across my manager's desk, and I got a phone call. Hey, you want to fight Joe Lozon in four weeks? And I said, uh, yep. As a matter of fact, I do. <laughs> so, got back to the gym, started training, and now uh, about 10 days out from the big fight. Yeah, big opportunity, obviously. Again, talk, talk about what was going through your head when you said the yes, and, and, and about the opportunity at hand. You know what? Honestly, it's just another win-win situation for me. Um, Joe, Joe Lozon on a couple of websites, I've noticed he's a top 15, uh, top 15 guy. He's got 12 fights in the UFC. Um, very well known. So it's just it's another big game to help help like catapult my career. It, 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 it's just a win-win. I, I lose to a guy like Joe Lozon. It's like I was supposed to lose to a guy like Joe Lozon. But if I beat Joe Lozon, I mean, arguably, it puts me in the top 10. It makes me. It, it'll make me a contender. I mean, I would imagine that. My, my next fight after a guy like Joe could possibly be for uh, a number one contender fight, if not, you know, a top contender fight. Yep. Well, you don't obviously feel like you're supposed to lose to Joe Lozano, though, right, Jamie? No, no. But, I mean, <laughs> I'm, not putting, I'm not putting all this pressure on me to win the fight. I know there's a chance. There's, there's a 50-50 chance. I mean, one of us has got to lose. So, um... I feel that I am the better fighter, but anything can happen. Um, even the best fall sometimes, you know. And you know, George St. Pierre's loss, Pierre Silva's loss, the the best fall. So, um, you know, I'm just gonna go out there. I'm gonna give him 15 minutes of hell and fury, and be the best man win. Yeah. Well, you're obviously not going to be as big of an underdog as you were against Edson there. Your your buddies are hope they cashed out on the last one, uh, like you mentioned, because. This one, you won't get quite the same value. No, no, I, I'm not going to be. I'm not going to be quite as big an underdog. But I'm probably still going to be about two to one, three to one underdog going into this fight. But it doesn't matter. I like being the underdog. Mm-hmm. It's, it's great. It, it takes all the pressure off the fight. You know, I I put a lot of pressure on myself in training to do things right and to to get better and to and to try and be as perfect as possible. But when it comes time to fight. No, I just trust in myself. I trust in my training. I just, I'm just going out there to have fun and uh, enjoy, enjoy my work. Yeah. So, I mean, that was like kind of the big, the big difference back with uh, my my career in 2010. I didn't enjoy my work. Now I'm really focusing on all the positive things. You know, doing, enjoying doing some of the PR and enjoying doing the science and enjoying the pressure of having the fight come up, enjoying the attention that I'm getting. When before I, I didn't really like it, but now, I mean, it can it can all be taken away so fast, so I'm just not taking it for granted anymore. Yeah, speaking of that, I mean, it isn't a little bit crazy. People were writing you off, you know, you, I'm sure you weren't getting much media attention. You went on your win streak, and, and now you're getting a lot of media attention. You're about to fight on national television here. Dude, this is, it, it, like I say, I mean, taking this fight was a win-win situation. To be on Fox Network TV during prime time and to be on on a really good car, I mean, there's just so many good fights and interesting matchups. Like, I, I'm just really looking forward. It's just, it's just a great opportunity. I mean, even if I go out there and I lose to Joe Lozon, it, the world is going to see me. They're going to see they're going to see my fighting style, and I think uh, I'm going to gain a lot of fans no matter what happens. Yeah. Um, thoughts on the matchup with Joe? I mean, wh- how do you see yourself sacking up with him? Well, Joe, Joe's a real tough guy. <laughs> I mean, he can, he's got more ways to win than Edson Barbosa did. That's for sure. I mean, he can submit you. He can knock you out. His wrestling training. He's a very well-rounded fighter. Um, I would say he's probably one of my toughest matches, matchups to date just because he's so well-rounded. Um, and... But with that being said, as far as speed and athleticism, Edson Barbosa is a much scarier, more dynamic fighter. 
but um, but Joe is just so well rounded. Uh, it's gonna be a tough fight, man. Uh, I, I would say I have the edge in probably the wrestling department and um, probably in the kickboxing department. His boxing's pretty decent. He, I know he hits pretty hard. I mean, he, he was able to hurt a couple guys with his left hook. Mm-hmm. So I know he hits hard. Um, I give myself the edge in, like, the kickboxing, boxing department and, and a little bit in the wrestling. But, I mean, when, when you're in there and you're fighting and you're, and you're throwing down, I mean, I've been taking down by guys that didn't even wrestle in high school. Like, guys like Donald Cerrone, he didn't, he didn't even wrestle in high school and he was able to take me down because I was looking to... To execute some some heavy like some big strikes, so mm-hmm. I mean, anything can happen in a fight. But I, I see myself being the better wrestler and probably the better uh, kickboxer. Yeah, well, Benson's also getting ready for his fight just one week out, so I'm sure you were back in the gym helping him get ready for his fight after your win, or what? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I'm probably the the guy in the gym that's most like Frankie as far as just with the wrestling and the striking. Uh, Frankie has a lot more movement than I do. He, he mm-hmm. likes to, he likes to run around a yeah. lot more than I do, but, um, I, I was right back in there helping him get ready because he, he was always there for me. So yeah, we, I spent a lot of time back in the gym, so I didn't really let myself go too much. If that's what, what you're trying to get at. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, how has he helped you also, uh, for you to get ready and having a high level guy like that also prepping, you know, for, for the biggest fight of his, his life. Yeah, I mean, it's great. Uh, the only problem with Ben Henderson is he's a southpaw. So, yeah. I mean, he still goes, he still goes righty for me, but it's it's a southpaw going righty for me. Just the, the technique and the movement isn't quite the same. Yeah. And his style is so much different than um, than Joe Lozon. Joe Lozon's more of a puncher, grappler, and um, Ben's more of a, a kicker. He like, he likes to throw a lot of kicks. He throws a ton of kicks. And uh, he, he looks to get in on the shot, which is good because that, that's one thing with um, Joe Lozon. He, he, likes to, he likes to get in, take guys down, and get on top of them. Mm-hmm. But he doesn't throw very many kicks. So ben, Ben's always Ben's a great trade partner. And to go rounds with a guy who's best in the world, I mean, what, what's this guy going to be able to do that, you know, that the world champ isn't, gonna, isn't already trying to do to me? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I, I definitely go into this fight confident, but... You know, all it takes is one mistake, and Joe is one of those guys, if you make a mistake, he will catch you. He's, he's smart, he's dynamic, he's, he's just well, so well-rounded. I, I have to fight a perfect fight in order to win. I don't I don't think I can make any mistakes. You know, with Barbosa, uh, I wasn't as, I wasn't as, like, scared to make a mistake. I mean, as long as I kept my hands up, uh, I felt pretty confident. That you know, I didn't have to worry about submissions and stuff like that with him. Uh-huh. But um, with this guy, I gotta keep my hands up. I gotta make sure that you know I don't get taken down. Um, if I do get taken down, I can't give him my back. I can't make any mistakes on the ground because he'll be able to catch me. It's it's a, it's just a, it's a scary fight, but it, mm-hmm. I really think it's gonna make for a good fight and a competitive fight. Okay, well, what's the X factor? Do you feel like in this fight? Um. I would say the X factor is probably probably my momentum that I have coming into this fight, mm-hmm. and uh, I would say my power. Uh, I, I'm a very explosive fighter. Like a lot of, I didn't get a lot of credit. Um, everybody kept saying how great of an athlete Edson Barbosa was, how great of an athlete he was. Well, I mean, I was a I was a two sport athlete in college, and I was an all American wrestler and a national champion boxer. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not a bad athlete. I'm pretty explosive. I'm pretty fast. Yep. So I would say that's probably the big difference. I feel like I'm. I'm a better athlete. I'm a little bit faster, a little bit more explosive than he is. But when you're as long and as rangy as, as a guy like Joe is, he doesn't really have to be super explosive because I have to get past his reach. I have to get inside his reach yep. in order to land some of those hard shots. So if he fights a smart fight. He can make it a long, hard night for me. Yeah, his his lo- his arms are really long, man. Really long for that weight. Oh yeah, it's like it's like he can poke you with a stick from far away, and I can't do anything about it. Like, he's got <laughs> he's got a really long reach. But if I want to fight guys 
um, in the top of the division, guys like Kipney Pettis, or he's got he's got a long reach. Uh, Donald Cerrone, Cerrone's got a long reach. Um, mm-hmm. Nate Diaz has got a long reach. Yep. So some of the top guys in the division have a long reach. So I got to learn how to deal with that, and this is going to be a good test, and it's going to be a step in the right direction. How many more years do you want to fight for? I mean, you're just back here in the big show, you know, going to be in the limelight here. How long do you see yourself doing this for as, as the sport grows? You know what? I used to have this number in my head. If you would have asked me that question two years ago, I would have told you I was going to probably retire around 30. Yeah. But um, I look up to guys like, like Uriah Saver and Jens Pulver and Tito Ortiz and some of these guys and... You know, some of the best years of their career were between ages 27, 30, 27 to 32, 33 years old. Mm-hmm. Um, and even uh, Randy Couture. Some of those, I mean, just... Yeah, Dan you know, Henderson's but, about to fight John Jones. Yeah, I mean, so I don't know. Um, I guess, I don't, I, I honestly, I can't give you a number. I, I just, I'll know when it's, when I'm done. Yeah, uh, I would like to. I would like to go out on my own terms, mm-hmm. as opposed to being cut and fighting. You know, fighting because I have to, not because I want to. Um, I would like to walk out with my head held high and my hand raised, just like Chris Lytle did. Yeah, to be honest with you. Yeah, I hate to see guys. You know, some of these guys have gone out on losses. I hate to see that, man. Legend of yeah, the sport. I don't know. When the fire isn't burning anymore, that's when that's when I'll walk away. When the fire isn't burning anymore, when I get sick of training, get sick of fighting, yeah. when I get bored with it, um, I don't know. Maybe when I have a family and I'm tired of getting hit in the face for a living, I don't, <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't know. Oh, you'll um, obviously always be involved in martial arts, right? I mean, moving forward in your life. Yeah, I, you know what? I'm probably a better coach than I am an athlete. So, um, yeah, I, I, I see myself always being involved, whether it's being a high school or college wrestling coach or um, owning a gym and, and coaching up-and-coming amateur and pro fighters, mm-hmm. um, I definitely want to pay it forward. You know, I want to I want to be able to change the lives of, of you know, the, the youth, the, you know, the guys of tomorrow, you know, the up-and-comers. You know, I, I want to be able to do the things that my coaches have done for me. Yeah. Isn't it crazy, man, for you? You've been around such a long time to see the growth of the sport. You were, you were, I'm sure, on shows where you were getting paid practically nothing. Now you're about to fight on national TV. Yeah, I fought Hermes Frank up back in 2007 for $3,000. <laughs> he, was ranked, he was ranked like ninth in the world at the time. I was this 21-year-old kid, <laughs> uh, fresh out of college, and just had his dream of fighting in the UFC. And, um... The money, to me, the money didn't even matter. I just, I just wanted to fight in the UFC. Yep. So, and this was back in the day when they were doing like 12 shows a year. Now they're doing 30. We're, we were, we weren't legal in more than like 15 states, 20 states. Now we're, we're legal in like 40 states. It, it's just, it's just crazy how far the sport has come. I mean, being in 177 countries, going into over a half a billion homes, it's, it is amazing. And being a part of Fox, I mean, you can go on Fox, FX, Kill TV, pretty much any day of the week, and you can see that you can find the UFC, at least something. Yep. You know, and it, it's just amazing how far this sport has come. Where do you attribute it most to, the growth? I mean, if you can pinpoint it down, where would you where would you say? I would say that the, um, the relevant matchups, I, there's... There's an excitement factor, and there's there is just that there's so many matchups out there, but anything can happen yeah. in MMA. And there, you don't have there, you have those standout fighters, but then and you you know anything can happen. Like when you see a guy like uh, Floyd Mayweather fight or a guy like Pacquiao fight, they're fighting these guys, and you don't even it's not even an option if they're gonna lose. I mean, even though Pacquiao just lost that fight, he didn't really lose that fight. There, that was some corrupt stuff going on there yeah. that I don't even really want to get into. But um, <laughs> there's just so many relevant matchups in MMA, and I think that the the level of education and 
how eloquent some of these fighters are and how down to earth they are, I think that also has attributed to the growth of the sport. Yeah. I mean, most of the guys are college educated. And, you know, a lot of the fighters that are successful in, uh, in mixed martial arts were former college wrestlers. And in college wrestling, now all sports in, in the NCAA, wrestlers have the highest overall GPA out of all the other sports. Wow. So, I mean, you get, you get a lot of educated people, eloquent people that are going into mixed martial arts. Yep. Well, that's awesome to see the growth, man. I really appreciate you taking the time. Nice to get your perspective on that. Anything else you want to say to us, Jamie? No, no. I just, uh, I just appreciate you, uh, you know, being patient with me. It's, uh, you know, coming, cutting the weight and doing all the training that I'm doing. It's hard for me to find time to do these, and a lot of times I don't want to do them, but yeah. like, I got to remember that it can all go away so soon, and it could go away just like that, and no one will want to talk to you. So I just appreciate you uh, being patient with me. Oh, likewise, man. Appreciate the time, and uh, we look forward to seeing you here in our city of Los Angeles. August 4th, you'll be taking on Joe Lozon, UFC on Fox 4. Appreciate the time, Jamie. Thanks so much, man. All right, take it easy, brother. Run!